Hey, I'm Michael. I live in Berlin and I work as a mentor in Makerspaces to teach kids being creative with technology. And on this channel, I want to share with you my best workshop ideas. So in this video, I want to show you how to create one of these interactive light cubes together with kids. These light cubes have a touch surface, so depending on where you touch it, it lights up in different colors. Um, so this project is a very cool project to explore the use of RGB LEDs. And building these require only very easy and cheap components. So a group of kids can make a whole bunch of these and attach them to each other to create a nice multi-touch surface. They can even play some cool games with it. So let's have a look how it works. There's a battery connected to an RGB LED. These three tracks connect back to the battery if this foldover switch is pressed down. Depending on where you press down, the RGB LED lights up blue, red or green. Touching two points at once results in a mixed color, because two colors get connected. I will explain the special role of this black paper later in the video. All my templates can be downloaded from my webpage. The game kids can play with these interactive cubes is also available for download. Every template comes with short instructions on how to build it. I recommend using 160 gram paper for printing my templates, but other paper will be fine too. Besides the printed templates, scissors and glue, you will only need conductive tape, an RGB LED, a button cell, a small resistor and a binder clip. The Velostat is optional, more on that later. You find a shopping list with all the links in the video description. Once you have printed the template, start by scoring the three edges marked by dotted lines with the round edge of a paper clip or any other pointy object. Now cut out the template. Don't forget the four short paper strips. Fold all edges in both directions. You will see scoring all edges up front really helps when folding. Then unfold again. Now trace all circuit tracks shown in the template with conductive tape. To make corners you can first fold the tape to the opposite side and then hold down and stick the tape to the direction you want to go. Or you just make a little loop when sticking it around the corner and then press down the loop. Don't worry about messed up corners, they work just as good. Make sure that none of these four tracks are touching each other. And don't forget the track on our switch. To connect our LED we first need to understand how it works. RGB LEDs have one leg that connects to one pole of the battery and the other three legs connect to the other pole. Depending on which of the three legs is connected, the LED lights up in a different color. The single leg is always the longest leg. You can experiment with the LED to find out how it works. Bend away the longest leg and get your battery between the single leg and the other three legs. You should be able to light up the LED in blue, green and red. Once you know how your RGB LED works, bend away the single leg opposing the three other legs. Depending on the length of the legs, you can bend the middle legs in a zigzag so that they don't exceed the folding edges. Use short strips of conductive tape to glue the four legs in place like shown. Give it a firm press to make a long lasting connection. Now we simply connect the battery to our circuit with the binder clip and fold over the switch. Test all three colors. In case the LED does not light up at all, try turning around the battery. Maybe you have another type of RGB LED that works the other way around. The template mentions to add a resistor to the red track of the LED. To achieve this we first need to find the red track and then put a small resistor in front of the LED. Make a small gap in the circuit near the right corner and glue a resistor in place with conductive tape. About 50 ohm should be good. What I do is, I add 100 ohm and see how the color mixing is. Pressing down on all three tracks should produce white light. If I'm not satisfied, I add another 100 ohm in parallel, which results in 50 ohm. You can even add a third one if necessary. To make sure there's no contact at our switch by just laying down, you can add these four strips of paper like that. Add more strips on top if pressing one point results in two colors to light up. If you want, you can mark your pressure points and the according colors on the top sheet. 
When everything works, you should be able to light up the LED in all sorts of colors by pressing down one, two or three points of the switch. To add a cool light cube to your LED, you will find a template in the video description. If you want, use some vegetable oil to make the paper more translucent. Then score all edges, cut out the shape, prefold everything and glue the cube together. To finish, fold over and glue the sides to the bottom. Glue the cube to the main part. You can also use transparent tape here. For testing, go to a pitch black room. Kids can also print out or paint symbols and emoticons to give their cube a unique look or mood. Now let's have a look at that black foil. It is called Velostat. It is super cheap and you can use it for measuring pressure. Adding it to our circuit makes it much more interactive because now the amount of pressure you apply controls the brightness of the corresponding LED color. You can also use the Velostat with my Easy Circuit template to play around with other components. Think of it as a thin layer that conducts electricity if there is pressure applied to it. The more pressure, the more electricity can flow. Or to be more precise, it is like a resistor that decreases its value when pressed. If you don't have the Velostat, don't worry, the touch cubes will still work fine. So this is already very interactive and fun, but I want to show you something that I find really awesome. You can add more touch cubes. So you can have every kit make their own touch cube and then join them up together. To join the cubes together, it is good practice to insulate the conductive tape at the edges with some transparent tape because the edges will touch each other later. Attach all cubes with some transparent tape. Add a large sheet of paper on top to connect everything. If you have, you can use one large piece of Velostat. And if you use it, you can remove the spacer strips to get very smooth color transitions. In the end, you get a very large multi-touch surface, which works really well. I can play with this for hours. Playing with it made me think of it as a big screen with 5 pixels. So I thought, what games could you possibly play with this? And the favorite game I came up with is a match 3 kind of game with some twists to the rules. Both players can win with any color as soon as one color shows 3 times in a row. Players play cards and light up one LED with the color shown on the card. Adding colors to already light up LEDs results in a new color. The player who lights up the third LED in a row showing the same color wins. There will never be a draw because at some point there will be three LEDs showing a white light. To play this game, use magnets and either put the touch matrix on a metal surface like a baking tray or your refrigerator or you glue counter magnets to the bottom side of the touch points. In case you use a metal surface that is not coated, it might be conductive. So cover it with sheets of paper for insulation. One last tip. If you're done playing, add a sheet of paper in between to make sure the batteries do not run low. So that's it. If you want to get started, I recommend you check the links in the video description. And if you want to support me, you can do so on Patreon, where I share even more resources for my projects. Like this little card game. The cubes illuminate symbols in different colors. The fastest person to pick the right card wins a point and can choose the next card to be shown to all players by lighting up the cubes in the right way. Or the print template for my early 3x3 touch matrix prototype, including a clean cover. With my next project, I want to dive into scratch programming to see how I can use my webcam and these touch cubes as an input device for games. So. If this is interesting to you, you might consider subscribing. Uh, if you're looking for an even simpler kids project, I recommend you check my previous video about these paper torches. And if you want to be prepared for future projects, I recommend you have a look at my wallpaper scissors box. 
it's nothing that I'm selling. It's just a list of materials that I find very interesting. And getting these will prepare you for all my future projects and also past projects. And all the materials are very inexpensive and easy to use. So thanks for watching and bye. Ah, one more thing. Building the project and playing with it is the fun part. But do not throw it away afterwards. You can easily take out the electronic components and reuse them in one of my future projects. It's best to store the batteries in their packaging. And don't forget to keep the paperclip too.